Hey guys, welcome to Derek Business Class. In this video, I'm gonna explain to you the basic concept of bonds. Bond is a type of long-term debt instrument or long-term liabilities or publicly traded IOUs. It is also called fixed income securities since interest payments are fixed amounts. For purchasing bonds, investors will receive two types of income from the borrower or the issuing firm. First, borrower agrees to repay a fixed amount of principal at a predetermined maturity date. Second, borrower agrees to pay a fixed amount of interest over a specified period of time. For most cases, bonds are issued by private entities, corporations, or government. Why invest in bonds? Mainly, they can provide current income for conservative investors. At times, they can provide capital gains for more aggressive investors. Some types of bonds can provide tax-free income. Generally, bonds can be used for capital preservation and long-term capital accumulation. This picture is a sample certificate of a bond. The Dow Chemical Company. This is the name of the issuing firm. $1,000. This is the principal value of the bond, usually called par value or face value, to be paid to the bondholders at the maturity date. 7.625%. This is the coupon interest rate. Taking 7.625% times $1,000, the par value, it means the bondholders will receive coupon interest payment of $76.25 every year. July 1, 2003. This is the maturity date, or due date of this piece of bond. Corporate bond is one of the most common types of bond. When you buy bonds, you are basically lending money to the company. In other words, issuing firm borrows money from you by selling bonds. So, bondholder is lender, issuing firm is borrower. Bondholders invest in the bond issued by issuing firm, by lending money. So. Bondholders may expect to receive interest periodically, which is semi-annually or annually, and receive principal at the end of maturity period. For the issuing firm that borrows money from the bondholders, it promises to repay interest and principal under clearly defined terms, such as when to pay and how much to pay. The following are some key features of a bond. Coupon. This is the amount of annual interest income. Multiply coupon rate by par value to get the coupon payment. Par value, the amount of capital that must be repaid at maturity, also known as face value or principal. Maturity date, the date when a bond matures and the principal must be repaid. Current yield, a measure of the annual interest income a bond provides relative to its current market price. Yield to maturity, the yield or return earned on a bond from the time it is purchased until the maturity date of the bond. It is also the discount rate used to value a bond. Call feature. It allows the issuer to repurchase the bonds before the maturity date. It can be freely callable, means any time the company can buy back the bond. Non-callable, means the company cannot retire the bond until maturity date. Or deferred call, which is a provision, that prohibits the company from calling the bond before a certain date. During this period, the bond is said to be call protected. Issuers will exercise the call feature when interest rates fall. So, the issuer can refund the issue at a lower cost and issue new bond at a lower rate. Call premium, this is the amount added to bonds par value and paid upon call to compensate bondholders. Call price, the bonds par value plus call premium Certain bonds also come with conversion feature, in which the convertible bonds allows bondholders to exchange their bonds for a specified number of shares of common stock. Bondholders will exercise this option only when the market price of the stock is greater than the conversion price, which will provide profit to bondholder. Next, let's talk about the relationship between interest rate and bond price. The behavior of interest rates is the single most important force in the bond market. In other words, bond market is mainly affected by the interest rates. Interest rates and bond prices move in opposite directions, which is a negative relationship. When interest rates rise, 
bond prices fall, or when interest rates drop, bond prices move up. That's why bond markets are bullish when interest rates are falling or low. Bullish means prices are going up. This is an important strategy for government to stimulate the market. Reduced market interest rate can help make the market go up. In opposite, bond markets are bearish when interest rates are rising or high. Bearish means prices are going down. As the principles of bond price behavior, price of a bond is a function of its coupon rate, its maturity, and market movements in interest rates. Longer maturities move more with changes in interest rates. You will get a premium bond if the bond price is above par value or YTM is below bond's coupon rate. YTM is the market interest rate. For a discount bond, the bond price is below par value or market interest rate is above coupon rate. You will get a par bond when the bond price equals par value or market interest rate equals coupon rate. There are some types of risk come with the bonds. Interest rate risk is the chance that changes in interest rates will affect the bond's value. Higher interest rate will cause the bond's value to drop. Purchasing power risk is the chance that bond yields will lag behind inflation rates, which means what you earn from the bond return is not sufficient to cover the inflation. Business or financial risk is the chance that the issuer of the bond will default on interest and or principal payments. Liquidity risk is the risk that a bond will be difficult to sell at a reasonable price. Call risk is the risk that a bond will be called or retired before its scheduled maturity date. If the bond is called, bondholders will no longer receive coupon interest from the company. From company's perspective, bond is debt, while share is equity or ownership. There are some differences in debt and equity. Debt is not an ownership interest, while equity is an ownership interest. Buying bonds means you are creditor, while buying shares means you are owner. For bondholders, they are creditors who do not have voting rights. But, common stockholders have voting rights to vote for the board of directors and other issues. Bond interest is considered a cost of doing business, and it is tax deductible. While share dividends are not considered a cost of doing business, and they are not tax deductible. So, using debt can help reduce the expenses of company. For bonds, creditors have legal recourse if interest or principal payments are missed. Legal recourse means the creditors are protected by law. If the company doesn't pay interest or principal to bondholders, bondholders can sue the company. However, dividends are not a liability of the firm and stockholders have no legal recourse if dividends are not paid, which means stockholders are not protected by law. The last one, which is the critical one, excess debt can lead to financial distress and bankruptcy. If company is not able to pay back the interest and in principal, the company can go bankrupt. However, an all-equity firm, which means the company does not have debt, as it is using 100% equity, this company cannot go bankrupt merely due to debt, since it has no debt. From investors' perspective, compared to stocks, bonds offer lower returns. It's good to include bonds in your portfolio because bonds have lower risk and good level of stability. For those who are conservative, bonds provide high levels of current income. Also, bonds provide diversification for a portfolio. In short, Bonds add an element of stability to a portfolio. Based on the performance of stocks and bonds from 1965 to 2014, 50-year annualized return of stocks is 9.91%, while for bonds is 6.58%. The return of stocks is higher than the return of bonds. As a basic principle, high risk, high return, low risk, low return. The risk of stocks is definitely higher than the risk of bonds. For the bond markets, bonds are traded mainly over the counter, not on exchanges. Bond price activity is remarkably stable compared to stock market. Surprisingly, bond market is larger than the U.S. stock market. In many countries, bond market is growing rapidly. 
when the issuer first offers new bonds, that first trading is done in the primary market, or the money raised from the sale of bonds goes directly to the issuer for its use. Subsequently, in the secondary market, the bonds can be bought and sold among other investors. For the issuance of bonds, bond indentures are important. In order to issue a bond, a third-party trustee, which is usually a bank or a trust company, is assigned by the issuer to serve the needs of the bondholders, including bringing suit in the event of a default. The bond indenture, also known as trust indenture or deed of trust, is a legal contract between the issuer and the trustee that specifies the scope and the responsibilities of the borrower, the trustee, and the lender. The bond indenture lists down the restrictive provisions, which are designed to protect bondholders, and describes the repayment provisions. According to Trust Indenture Act of 1939, trustee represents the debt holders. They are responsible for ensuring companies adhere to terms and covenants and the trustee's expenses will be paid by issuing firms. In such legal contract, the indenture specifies the coupon rate, the par value, the date of maturity, the procedures to modify the indenture after issuance, the purpose of the bond issue, collateral, call provision, sinking fund provision, etc. Another important aspect is bond ratings. Bond ratings are letter grades that designate investment quality. Private bond rating agencies assign ratings based upon financial analysis of the bond issuer. Generally, investment grade ratings are received by financially strong companies. However, junk bond ratings are received by companies with high payments but with high default risk. These high paying bonds have a lower credit rating than the investment grade bonds, while higher rated bonds have less default risk. That's why they pay lower interest rates. Sometimes, split ratings occur when a bond issue is given different ratings by major rating agencies. Institutions and investment funds managers use credit ratings provided by independent agencies, such as Moody's or S&P, in gouging the credit worthiness of bonds. AAA is the highest rating for a bond, followed by AA and single A. Triple B is the lowest rating for an investment grade bond. Starting from double B, these would be junk bond ratings. There are many factors to cause favorable effect on the bond rating, such as a greater reliance on equity as opposed to debt in financing the firm, profitable operations, low variability in past earnings, large firm size, and minimal use of subordinated debt. All right, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.